Thanks for joining, guys. We'll get started in just a minute. Just waiting for a few more people to hop on to the webinar. All right, thank you guys for joining the webinar today. Uh, and today we're gonna to be talking about ETF issuers and how they can leverage our Logically platform to give them a competitive advantage, help them grow AUM and further increase advisory engagement. Because let's be honest, we all need help with competing with the big guys. And who better to discuss that with than a former ETF saleswoman and now our head of sales, Lindsay Tool. How are you today, Lindsay? Hey, I'm great. Thank you guys for joining. I'm looking forward to showing you the latest and greatest that uh, Logically has to offer. Definitely. And I can see a lot of familiar names on the webinar today. But for those of you who don't know, Lindsay, why don't you give us a little bit of background? Sure. Um, so, so yeah, so we are a financial technology company. Um, our goal is really to provide you know, a new level of understanding to the world of investing, um, not just ETFs, um, more than that. And we've built, um, a, you know, a cloud-hosted web-based platform that delivers workflow tools and visualizations to not only issuers, but now to advisors. Um, so we're looking forward to showing you some of the, you know, portfolio analysis, some of the tools the dimensions that we go into in terms of risk and cost and exposure. Um, one of the things to mention about, about the platform is that, you know, what you'll see today, everything is an API, um, which can be integrated into either internal systems you may have or into your websites, into the look and feel of the sites. And, you know, what I, what I think sets us apart from some of our competitors out there is the fact that, we're really simplifying the data um, and reducing the quantitative lift it takes to get powerful and unbiased uh, analytics. So, you know, one way we do this or how we do this really is we take in data from both public sources. We get, a, you know, fund files from all the issuers on an overnight basis. And, and then we have several data providers as well. And then we use a proprietary technology and calculations to create this comprehensive database. Um, we deliver it in two ways. One is a subscription license to the Logically platform we'll, we'll show you today. And number two is through integrating our tools onto issuers' websites. You know, everything from the ETF rule compliance to, you know, white labeling, um, you know, and doing customization of these tools on your sites. Awesome. So, Lindsay, you used to be on the sales team at ProShares, right? What are some of the biggest pain points you had in your sales and distribution efforts when it came down to answering questions uh, that were, you know, analytics or data driven? Yeah, sure. You know, um, when I was at ProShares, I found myself found myself spending way too much time running analysis for, you know, a client's question one day. Um, you know, pulling from Bloomberg, you know, talking to internal groups or using Zephyr, you know, several different um, platforms and then having to run, you know, an ad hoc analysis, analysis, all to do it again the next day for a different client with a slightly different question. Um, you know, another pain point we're all painfully aware of is that there are two very large players out there that really dominate the ETF space. And they have their own big teams and unlimited resources to build these type of analytics. So, you know, how do you, how do you compete? How do you keep up? And, 
you know, I think if I had access to logically at, at ProShares, it would have allowed me to focus more on, you know, sales and, you know, building the relationships, um, you know, which is what I like to do. And I think I'm better at, um, and, and having access to, you know, the click of a button running these analytics and, and having a nice report that I can just immediately send to a client to answer that question um, would, be, would, would be extremely helpful. Um, you know, also the, the platform is very, you know, mobile, I've had friendly, um, if we ever get back on the road, um, or, you know, now and in a setting like this, you can easily pull up the platform on Zoom and run the analysis on the fly, which, which really, I think, proves to the client, um, you know, just the, the accuracy of it, and, and it shows them what, what you're doing to, to give them that answer. Excellent. So from speaking with all of our issuer clients, it seems like there are really three main questions that they get from advisors, right? And number one being, how can I compare your ETFs with peer group names. Number two being your ETF doesn't trade much on screen. So how can I assess the ETFs true liquidity? And number three, uh, probably the most important one, right? How do your products fit within my existing portfolio? So Lindsay, why don't you run us down through each one of those questions and how you would answer it if you were a salesperson at an ETF issuer? Awesome. Okay, so let's tackle that first one first. So how can I compare your ETFs with, you know, comparable ETFs? Um, so in this case, I, I want to show you guys the screener tool because we've done a lot to this. So you might remember these kind of predefined filters here. Um, so let's say you don't, you know, you don't have a peer group. But in this case, let's say we want to look for U.S. equity, um, ESG related ETFs. So as you can see in this detailed screener here now, um, there's several different tabs. You know, we're showing over 7,000 funds. That's because now we have global listings. So all ETFs, USITs, um, you know, et cetera, ETNs. And there's a lot of ways that you can sift through this universe. This is specifically, you know, helpful for, for advisors trying to find, you know, the right ETFs and not just looking for the ones with the cheapest expense ratio. Um, so, you know, you can sort by benchmark. You know, you just want to look at funds that are using an index provided by MSCI, for example. Um, you know, you can just go in and, and type in an issuer if you know you want, you know, American Century Funds. Or you can, you know, look at quant stats, so the volatility, the momentum. So there's a lot of different ways that you can sort down the universe. Um, but in this case, like I said, let's go into the general tab and let's look at equity, each time I push this, it's, it's bringing down that universe. And let's look at you know, only ETFs. And let's look at you know, trading in the US. And let's say we only want you know, funds with an expense ratio less than a percent, let's say, and get somewhere close to there. And then, so we still have 1300 there, but let's say, let's just look at ESG. So now there's this tags button here. So there's a lot of different things you can, you can put in to find ETFs. So I'm just gonna click on ESG because I know that's what I want. Um, Lindsay, and, and that works now through the top search function, right? All of those tags. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to point that out. I wanted to just kind of show you guys the different filters, but I could just type in here ESG in the search. You can type in anything and there's going to be tags and it's going to pull up all the um, ESG funds. In this case, if I was to do this, there'd be like 230 because it would include all international and fixed income and such. So let's see, we got the universe down to 26 funds. So now, you know, there's obviously the, the overview. You can, you can look at these, um, you know, against each other in terms of expense ratio, AUM, et cetera. There's also, you know, if you just want to look at returns, there's a tab that goes into, you know, various um, time, time periods of returns across all these funds. There's price technicals, basket stats, volume, ESG. So since these are ESG funds, I thought it'd be fun to look at the ESG uh, ratings. Um, we use a 
company called Arabesque, um, their S-Ray methodology, and they rate individual U.S. equity stocks on, you know, lots of different metrics, human rights, labor rights, environment, et cetera. This is kind of the global compact score. So, again, I'm trying to show you guys how to compare an ETF to a peer. So let's find two that we want to compare. And maybe let's just pick the, the two um, with the highest, you know, global compact ESG score, if you will, overall score. Um, just as this is sorting, to note, everything is um, downloadable to Excel now, right here. Um, so, you know, there's tons and tons of data in this, and, and you can play with it however, however you like in that format. Okay, so cool. So the top two ranking are from two different issuers, and not the big two issuers. So that's cool. Let's take a look at these guys. Um, so you see here, there's these little dots. This gives you functionality to go into different tools, all the tools, again, being on this drop down menu over here. So um, the analyze, this will take you into the portfolio analysis tool, which I'll show you, um, show, show you a bit later, which really deep dives into, you know, lots of different metrics and you can build portfolios in that tool. Um, the compare, which we're going to do side by side, you can create watch list now. And then view all listings is just saying it'll show you all the countries where this ETF is listed. So let's go into compare. So we have RESD, Wisdom Trees, and let's just type in MUDM for Nuveens. And, you know, here, like I mentioned, you can add as many tickers as you want here. You can even um, upload a portfolio you have existing CSV, drag it in here and it'll populate. Um, you know, once you create portfolios are always saved in here. But for, for purposes now, let's just look at these two side by side. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, we have all the constituent level details. So while we're, while it's thinking, it's unpacking all of that and, and running the, running the analysis so we can see the comparison of, you know, sectors and performance and, and risk. Um, and such. So simply you can see, you know, just the, the overview side by side. You can look, um, this defaults to a 60-40 benchmark up above, you can, you can set a benchmark. Um, so you can see, you know, Wisdom Tree seems to be, you know, outperforming as of late. Um, you can look at, you know, it looks like Nuveen has more financial exposure. Um, wisdom tree more healthcare and IT. So a quick way to show your client, um, you know, you know, comparing, you know, against a peer, you know, performance, trailing performance. Again, you can you can take out this benchmark and you can set it to what you'd like. Um, and you know, all of these reports are PDFable, so you can um, download. You can put your logo on it, who you prepared it for. Etc. So I think that that kind of sums up how I would go about answering that first question. Excellent. And so the second question that we were talking about is one that I hear a lot when about when speaking with advisors, and it's often a topic that I think a lot of advisors struggle with, because when you're talking about liquidity, I think many advisors think that if your ETF doesn't trade a lot on screen that you're not going to be able to pick up a lot of shares, um, you know, without change, moving the market a lot, a uh, ton, right? So the second question that we had talked about was, you know, how can I better understand how your ETFs trade and, or how much, you know, can I uh, trade of them? Yeah, sure. So that's our basket true liquidity tool down here. Um, so, you know, the purpose of this is really to provide an accurate, you know, trade size estimate for a given impact costs, um, you know, of, of an ETF basket. Um, here you can use these toggles to, you know, change these, change the, um, you know, match when a trade or participation rate, you can drop the lowest components. Um, for purposes of today, I'm going to select an ETF that I know doesn't trade much on screen, um, 
But if I didn't know, I could go back to the screener again and you know, pick your universe and you could sort by ADV. Um, but of course, as an issue, as a issuer, you would know um, your ETF. So I'm going to look at one of my favorites. She, the gender diversified index by a treat. So when I hit um, apply, you're going to see this ETF only trades about 7,000 shares. Um, it's got a five star rating from us. And we're saying, it says on the screen only to trade 7K, but we're saying you can actually pick up, you know, close to a million shares. And, you know, how we do this, so we're, we're, we're doing a, you know, transaction cost um, analysis on, on each one of the individual uh, constituents here. So we're seeing, we're, we see that ZTS is probably the one, you know, limiting, um, you know, with the least, you know, the least liquid name, if you will. So, you know, if you wanted, you could drop, let's say, you know, the top 2%, and that number should go up. Um, you yeah, know, slightly went up just a bit. Um, but so this is, you know, a good way, you know, from a, from a third party to, to show, you know, the, the underlying and the actual true liquidity of that ETF. Awesome. So how does something like this compare to a tool that probably a lot of issuers use, right, which is the ETFL function? On Bloomberg? Yes, that is a good question. So the ETFL function on Bloomberg is a more conservative measure. Um, this shows you how many shares you could get while being no more than 25% of the you know 20 day ADV of any security in the basket. So it's basically just taking the lowest ADV component and assuming you can pick up only 25% of that. Um, so as you saw, we do our impact cost model on you know each constituent in, in the basket. Um, so this is is this is technically the ETFL function here, uh, basic implied liquidity. And this is what we're we're saying up here. Yes. Got it. So the third let's jump into the third question, which was all about how your products can fit within a portfolio, right? So we've developed, developed a lot of portfolio construction tools. And, you know, when I'm speaking with advisors, it's, it's obviously the fan favorite, but how can ETF issuers leverage those same tools to communicate the value of their products better? Yeah, so let's go to the portfolio analysis tool. Um, so this looks similar to the side-by-side -side we showed earlier. Um, but so there's you know, many ways you can upload a portfolio. You could manually input here. You could, as I showed you before, you could upgrade or sorry, upload. Um, also, something that's new is that we have integrations with over you know 30 plus custodians. So the financial user or financial advisor could go in and actually pull their client's account down from Fidelity, Schwab, wherever, directly into this tool. But for the purpose of today. I just, I'm going to pull up a loaded portfolio I have and keep it simple, um, just a 60-40 SPY AGG. So when I hit apply, you're going to see several different tabs um, with a deeper dive into the performance, the risk, the cost, factors, um, ESG, et cetera. We won't go into all these tabs at this point, but let's just look at this now and just from a high level, you know, 12.7% 12, 12 return over the last year, you know, about 20% volatility or risk, the weighted average expense ratio is 7.3 bips. So now let's say we are a wisdom tree salesperson and we're, we're saying, you know, what, why don't you take some of that spy exposure and put it into our growth leader front fund, P-L-A-T. So let's just take, um, let's take 10% out of SPY and put it in there and let's see what happens to the portfolio. So when we hit apply, we will see Again, those, those different grids, and we'll see, oh, wow, look, we boosted our performance but from 12.7 to 
the volatility or the risk actually went down a little bit. And of course, this expense ratio went up just a tad, um, which the performance you know, overcompensates for. Um, just to show you some of these tabs, um, you know, for any portfolio that you that you put in here. Again, you can put single stocks, you can put um, you know, cash positions, and very soon you can put mutual funds in here to create your portfolio. So it'll give you a good breakdown um, of the sectors of the fixed income, uh, bond types, maturities, you know, credit exposures. That's just on the exposure tab. And of course, there's the factors tab, um, which will give you, um, again, the benchmark defaults to 6040 SPY AGG, but you can change that. Um, you know, the beta sensitivities to you know, the, the different factors, which allows us to do this factor back test. So you can say, you know, before these ETFs were around, this is kind of how it would have performed uh, given the factor, you know, composition of the portfolio. Um, so now, you know, let's say you want to show your client, okay, let, let's just compare it back to your existing portfolio, which was just with SPY and AGG. So I'm just going to go to compare, again, back to the side by side, and I'm going to load um, now just the SPY AGG, but I'm going to change this name here just so it says plat so we can see uh, the differences when we do the side by side. So quickly, I'm going to hit apply again. brings us back to, to the side-by-side. -side. Again, it's thinking, running a lot of calculations. Um, again, we get the, the different breakdowns. And, you know, for example, it looks like in the sectors, uh, the portfolio with PLAT has, you know, slightly more IT, um, more communication services. Again, this is their growth leaders fund. Um, so again, just, just a way to, you know, take a client's existing portfolio. Obviously, it can be more complicated than the one that we just did here for simplicity purposes. Plug in your ETF, you know, rearranging the allocation and, and see what happens. And by having this tool yourself, you know, you can play around with it. You're not going to show something that doesn't, that doesn't look good or, or meet, the, meet the client's objectives. But, you know, when it does, it's PDF it. And... Uh, you know, customize it. You don't have to show them all these grids. You can just show them, you know, the ones you want. You can customize it with uh, your logo. And there you go. Uh, send, it off, send it off to a client. Excellent. Well, it looks like we're coming up on 30, Lindsay. Uh, should probably pass it over to uh, the Q&A section. So, we have a couple questions, um, one in the chat and then a couple via the Q&A. So the first one was from Samantha and she asked, can we wait white label tools uh, for other websites? Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Um, thanks for asking because we are doing a lot of that custom work right now um, for issuer clients. You know, I think I mentioned at the beginning that all of the tools that you saw are APIs and they can be plugged into the look and feel of your website. So we really, you know, take the heavy quant lift off the plate, um, definitely a reduction in cost and allowing us to do it than trying to build internally. Um, you know, the tools are already built, they're ready to go, they're global. Um, you know, we, we think and we've seen, you know, the ROI on, on having these tools on your site versus maybe, you know, an advertising campaign is, is extremely more, more effective. Um, I think some of you guys know that we did integrate with, with the New York Stock Exchange um, with some of, you know, for, for tools on their site. And then we recently did with ETF Stream. Um, so you see here, can you see the ETF Stream site? So here are all these ETFs are, you know, um, they mentioned in one of their news, you know, in any of their news articles and they're hyperlinked. So let's say we want to click on you know this one and, and learn more about it. It pulls it directly into into our platform. Um, 
and this is kind of the the overview page. Um, you know, I didn't show you an overview page, but we have for you know, for every ETF out there globally, um, and we give you know quite a bit of of information here. And this is an example of you know integrating into an existing website. Um, and you know, obviously, you can have behind the screen, you know, a login or a professional login where you have some of the tools like True Liquidity or, or the side by side. Um, so yeah, so very very robust. And you know, we we did this very very quickly. Our engineering team, I have to give them a shout out because they are excellent and make our jobs a lot a lot easier. Yeah, love the the new tool. Um, the second question that we had was around how to. Hold on one second. Let me just pull it up. Um, so they saw in the drop down menu that something called the logically model marketplace, and they were curious uh, what that tool did. Oh, good point. Um, thanks for bringing that up. We did so. So you see in, in the toolbar here, we have the, the Logically Marketplace, and, and this is a fairly, fairly new initiative for us, but, you know, as advisors are moving more and more into models, uh, they need help navigating the, that landscape, and they need tools to, you know, evaluate the models, you know, quickly, do their due diligence, decide which ones they want. So in here, you know, there's different parameters they can select to, to choose a model, and you know we've partnered with some of the big guys. We're we're looking for more of this already. You will. It's it's free for an issuer to list their models here. Um, so it seems as a you know a, a no brainer. So we'll we'll be having more and more, um, you know, of the the ETF model portfolios and soon uh, mutual funds on here. But the point is, so for the advisor, they can go in and click, and it pulls it directly into that portfolio analysis tool again. I keep saying that, but. Um, again, a quick way for them to, you know, evaluate and, you know, show the report to their investment committee or show the report to their client and say, okay, is this the kind of exposure you're looking for? Or does this make sense? Um, or, or this is why we picked this, um, you know, this model. And so I think, you know, for, for issuers, you guys should have your models everywhere. I know every issuer now has a very dedicated model distribution team. Um, so if you're not on that team, Talk to that team. Appreciate any you know re referrals and um, you know it's it's kind of uh, you know a, a great a great place. You know we're not doing any of the training or implementation. Obviously, it's just a tool to help you know to help advisors and also you know a marketing tool for for you guys as well. Excellent. Um, I just put in the chat, if you guys want to drop any more questions, we do have one more, um, so we can answer two. Uh, the question three was, do I have to manually input holdings into the portfolio analysis tool that you showed before? Um, no, so actually, um, let's do a new portfolio. So um, you can, if you have you know your positions in a, a Excel file, put it in a CSV file and you can upload it right here and it drags, you know, and, and, and populates that section quickly. Um, also, we have integrated with um, a lot of custodians. Um, so you can, uh, there's an integrations button where, you know, an advisor can pull in their client's accounts directly into, the, into this format and, you know, run, run the application quickly. But even say, let's say we pulled in one from the model portfolio, you know, from from the the marketplace and pull it right in here. But you wanted to change out one of the ETFs, you can do that. If you want to, you know, any any kind of um, there there are several ways to to get the portfolios in. Awesome. Well, I think that wraps up the questions that we had from the audience. Um, Lindsay, maybe we could just close out the event. Yeah, so I said there'd be a surprise at the end in one of my recent LinkedIn posts. So the surprise is, because this was just a teaser of the platform, I'm giving out a one free week trial 
um, for those of you guys that, that aren't our clients already. Um, so please go to app.logically.finance slash sign up and your code is issuer2020 um, and you can get a free week trial. And also, you know, please reach out to me at any time, Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y at etflogic.io. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. I love sharing our product. We're really excited about what we've built and we've had some great, um, you know, issuer clients and we're really building this advisor, um, you know, audience. And I think that's actually really great for you guys as well. It helps our relationships with you and we will have more data to, to feed you on what advisors are doing. And um, there's just a lot, a lot of partnership opportunities and, we look forward to um, more of these and, and talking to you guys and maybe seeing you in person soon. Awesome. Yeah, and um, for anyone that wants to forward this webinar uh, to their colleagues, it has been recorded, uh, so you can do, do so, and that uh, free trial code uh, will be available to them as well. Thank you guys so much, and uh, have a great day. Thank you.